Howdy everybody, this is Bake with IronThroneCraft.com. Today we're going to be diving deeply into the combat mechanics in Iron Throne and trying to learn a little bit about the math behind the game and how to better defend ourselves using that math. A lot of people don't understand basic stuff about the game, so we're going to talk about that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our archery range and check out the basic stats on a tier 5 troop. You see that they've got these what we're referring to as base stats. Attack, defense, HP, march speed, capacity, power, and upkeep. Those little green numbers you see next to those are from troop training research, which is why that research is so incredibly important, because that's the only way that you can increase your base stats per tier. These base stats are then modified by the uh, percentages from gear and research and whatnot. So as you increase those percentages, you'll be increasing the amount of those base stats, but the base stats will stay the same other than troop training research. If you look at tier four, you see that those numbers are all a little bit lower, which is why tier five are stronger than tier four, tier four is stronger than tier three, etc., etc., etc. You see the uh, HP numbers are what we're really looking at when it comes to defending our base. We cannot increase defense numbers through troop training research, which is why we're seeing so many huge people burn. But if we go and we look at our siege workshop, and look at that, we'll notice that, see on tier 5, the attack and HP numbers are slightly lower. So siege are just inherently weaker than troops when it comes to attacking and defending. But a very important thing to notice is that they're weak against nothing. If you go look at archers over here, and look at tier 5, they're strong against infantry, and they're weak against cavalry. And this is what we're referring to when we say troop leverage and troop affinity. And per the developers in a uh, release on the forums, base leverage means 150% damage done to your strong against and 50% damage done to your weak against. So if you look at Siege again, you see they're strong against traps, which we don't care about. What we care about is the fact that they're weak against nothing. So that means that nothing will do an extra 150% damage to them, which is pretty important. And what we need to learn is if the HP difference will be negated by that fact. You go look at tier two, see the stats on that, 232 base HP. And so a lot of people defend with tier two. Let's check the stats on a tier two troop now. Go look at tier two infantry, and you see that he's got 290 HP, which is a good amount different. So after learning this, what we decided is we need to go in and we need to do some actual testing. You see infantry is weak against archers and they're strong against cavalry. We need to actually test this and figure out if the leverage difference there makes enough of a difference to make up for that HP difference. Because nobody wants to just burn based on paper, rock, scissors. We want to learn the math behind it. This is the wheel, the troop leverage wheel. Infantry kill cav, cav kill archers, and archers kill infantry. You see siege just hanging out in the middle there. They're obviously slightly weaker than normal troops, but nothing has leverage against them, which is a huge deal when you look at these researches. Leveraged type damage increase for each type and decreased affinity penalty. This is at the end of the troop training tree, and this is why you see truly massive accounts obliterating people, like when you saw in my invasion video. So here's the testing we did. 10 hits, we sent tier four every time, and we just adjusted the troops that are defending to uh, see what was going on. Let's zoom in on hit one and two, and you see that on hit one, I had mixed tier two troops with some siege and tier four troops with some siege, which is a pretty common trap setup. And you see that I lost a ton of infantry because of the leverage there. So, for hit two, we removed that. Put only siege in bottom tier. We lost a lot less. Whole lot less. Which tells us that even though siege are weaker, they still take less damage from the bad guys because they're not leveraged against. And moving forward, we're going to be running with all tier two siege to defend with. To ensure that the attacker cannot win paper rock scissors. We're not giving them that option. But for the next few hits, what I did is I increased the Tier 2 Siege count, which resulted in less losses. So now we know that that matters, the Tier 2 Siege count matters, and gives you less losses. But what doesn't matter, based on those next results, is with the troops standing behind them. The results were the exact same, whether Tier 3 or Tier 4 are behind them. This is important to know, because it means that Tier 3 and Tier 4 are only giving us killing power. They're not giving us a reduction in losses when they're standing behind Tier 2, if the attacker sends Tier 4. And the next few hits are the bread and butter. You see that we removed the tier 4 from behind the tier 2 and we replaced it with tier 5. That resulted in a massive reduction in loss. We actually lost 0 and capped the enemy hero. And so what that means is that tier 5 standing behind tier 2 do reduce the amount of damage taken from tier 4. You see that then when we reduce the number of tier 5 standing behind the tier 2, the kills started to go up a little bit again, which shows that those tier 5 are directly interacting with how many of our tier 2 we're losing when the attacker sends tier 4. 
So for the next couple of hits, what we did is we started stepping that tier 5 count up and down and seeing what happened. As we increased the number of tier 5, we lost less troops. If we replaced the tier 5 with tier 4, we lost more troops. And then here, you see that we increased the number of tier 2 siege, which resulted in less losses. So that troop count matters, and the tier 5 troop count matters. And these hits show that the tier 5 troop count matters a lot more than the tier 2 count in order to reduce damage from tier 4 troops. So if the attacker is sending tier 4, your important tiers are tier 2, which you want to be siege, and tier 5. And that will greatly increase your ability to cap against tier 4 troops. Tier 5, however, is different. And that's what our next video will be on. And you can see all of that information at ironthronecraft.com. So give us a like, give us a follow, learn the mechanics behind the game, and learn how to dominate your kingdom.